this is the Memory and Resistance Laboratory podcast. I am Latipa, Director of the Memory and Resistance Laboratory and Associate Professor of Media and Cultural Studies at the University of California, Riverside. The Memory and Resistance Laboratory is a hub for anti-racist, decolonial, and feminist of color artistic research. In this podcast series, Memory and Resistance in the Time of COVID, students from UCR interview people across the fields of education, art, medicine, and labor organizing to ask about the larger political, social, historical, and economic impacts of our current circumstances for vulnerable communities. In this episode, we are joined by Zainab Sieda, who serves as a manager of community outreach and volunteer engagement at the South Asian Network. Zainab is interviewed by Zaina Wasim, a third year student majoring in global studies and media and cultural studies at the University of California, Riverside. Um, so today we have Zainab from South Asian Network. Um, Zainab, can you please introduce yourself and just tell us a little bit about what you do for South Asian Network? Yeah. So hi, everyone. My name is Zainab Saida. I'm the manager of community outreach and volunteer engagement at the South Asian Network. Um, A little bit of a background around the organization. We are turning 30 this year. 2020 is our 30th Mm -hmm. anniversary. And we have um, been we have transformed from like a social justice advocacy group to now a multi direct service organization. Yeah. Awesome. Um, So just like um, elaborating on that, what services do you offer to cater to the needs of the South Asians in uh, Southern California? Yeah, so uh, what I can do is I can go in uh, into a little bit more detail about the organization and then sort of go through our our programmatic units Mm -hmm. and things like that. Um, So like I said, we are a now 30-year-old grassroots um, nonprofit organization, community-based, and sort of the way that we sort of approach our services is um, through like a linguistic and cultural understanding. Um, uh, As I think a lot of us know, um, like the immigrant experience coming to the U.S. or coming to like, you know, into a different country, um, there is lots of barriers for limited English proficient households, for low income households. So um, really trying to make sure that those households, those vulnerable households Mm -hmm. are getting the resources and the the help that they need um, in their language, in their community. Um, and we really do celebrate the, un- the diversity of the South Asian community. Um, so we serve a community, the South Asian community across the board, regardless of your religious, linguistic background or your country of origin. Um, and we, we really like to celebrate that diversity. Um, yeah, and so we have uh, been serving and advocating on behalf of the South Asian community of Southern California in the areas of healthcare access, immigrant and civil rights, civic engagement, and gender-based violence. Um, and our services are broken up into three main program units. Um, the first one is AWAS, which is Voices Against Violence. This is our gender-based violence unit. Um, in this unit, we're supporting survivors of domestic violence, sexual assault, and human trafficking. Uh, we provide case management, um, really just trying to walk Uh, survivors through their options and supporting them however they like to proceed um, and also providing them the emotional support. We have an amazing um, mental health therapist on our staff who is able to support the the support survivors and just the community in general um, where they need it. Uh, We are not a legal agency and we like to make that very clear is that we can't provide the legal advice but we have built um, a very wonderful network of legal aid organizations um, or just various legal organizations that provide low cost or free um, uh, legal advice. Um, And we also have a pro bono network of South Asian attorneys who um, can provide legal advice for, uh, you know, on a pro bono Mm -hmm. basis. Um, Along with, along with that, we also um, are provide, we also do a lot of community workshops around mental health, I mean, around um, healthy families and mental health, but I'll get into (laughs) into that later. Um, But around healthy families and sort of like doing the prevention work so that it doesn't need to get to that, that point of, um, you know, violence. And so trying to um, 
do like healthy family workshops, healthy parenting workshops, workshops with teens and with youth as well. Um, and also just providing a safe space for survivors um, and combating the notion of shame, the shame that's associated with speaking out about abuse mm-hmm. and things like that. Um, I think that something and this is like in Hindi Urdu, but like um, the uh, the notion of like ghar ki baat or like mm-hmm. uh, uh, the notion of like this this is something that should stay in the home. This is a, a matter that is private. Um, when you know that that's kind of a way to prevent people from speaking out about their abuse or you know be, uh, like having people be stuck in these situations. Mm-hmm. So really trying to combat combat that and also provide the support for survivors. Um, our next unit is our civil rights unit, um, and this is where we do a lot of our uh, immigrant rights, civil rights, and civic engagement work. Um, we assist with applying for U.S. citizenship um, for those who are, um, you know, green card holders for like four years and nine months, I think it is. Um, we help people apply for U.S. citizenship, apply for fee waivers if they can't afford um, to pay. It's like now increased to like a $1,200 fee to just apply for the, mm-hmm. the citizenship. Um, so just trying to like uh, also like relay the benefits of being a citizen um, because a, a lot of people who are on Greek cards are like comfortable with it, but um, there's a, an extra layer of um, opportunity available um, for like voting and things like that for citizens. Um, and then alongside with that, we also do a lot of hate crimes awareness. Um, so just really trying to uh, build awareness around what a hate crime is and what a hate incident is, but also, um, you know, encouraging community members to report it and providing them the support if they um, do experience hate crimes. Um, and so, yeah, really trying to just uh, support the community and uh, encourage them to, to, to report it because for a lot of people, they like, they shy away from that, but we really want to encourage them to understand that this is their home. They deserve mm-hmm. to feel safe and um, they like, no one deserves like to be hate, like, you know, have right. like those hate crimes, and things like that. Um, and yeah, and then sort of kind of going off of that, we do a lot of policy advocacy work around var- various policies that directly affect the community. Um, so recently there was like, the public charge um, and really trying to speak out against that and um, support the community and also just break down the policies for like once they are passed or whatever the case it, it is, um, really trying to break it down and explain it in in like simple terms and in understandable digestible language for the community. Um, and yeah, and then uh, lastly, in our civil rights unit is our civic engagement work. So 2020 is like, so, like was such a big year in like starting January, like going into it, like it was already election year, census year. For Sam, it's like our 30th anniversary. So it was a big yes. Mm-hmm. Then the pandemic hit, but like that doesn't stop the work. That doesn't stop the census from happening. That doesn't stop the elections from happening, right? Mm-hmm. So um, just trying to like do a lot of census in, uh, engagement work, census outreach and voter engagement work. Um, and then our last unit is our, our Jai unit, which is our Community Health Action Initiative. Um, and under, our, under Jai, we do um, help people apply for public benefits like health insurance, um, Medi-Cal, Covered California, Social Security, food stamps, et cetera. Um, and also, again, providing, like I had mentioned, the mental health counseling, um, providing the like culturally and linguistically sensitive mental health counseling, um, and then also doing uh, community workshops around, um, you know, healthy living and destigmatizing mental health in the community. Um, I know I, we were at UCR recently mm-hmm. to do a mental health workshop. Um, and yeah, and all of our services, I want to say, um, are offered in currently in five different South Asian languages. So that's like Hindi, Urdu, Punjabi, um, Nepali, and Bangla. Um, and we are always seeking volunteers and like, you know, expanding our staff to like have more um, linguistic opportunity for like ac- for access to like different languages um, that we can offer the community. Right. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for sharing all of that. Um, so as you know, like the COVID pandemic has hit a lot of us. Um, so under the current circumstances, how have these services been Im- uh, impacted? Yeah, yeah, the, the coronavirus really threw a curveball at all of us. <laughs> um, 
And right. I, I think that like for, for our services, our office had to close. We've been closed since March 19th mm-hmm. um, because we are in LA County and like we uh, abiding by the, the mayor of LA and also Governor Newsom's um, sort of the, the orders that to stay home um, and shelter in place, we had to close our office. Um, but you know, we have been able to offer all of our services remotely. Um, Not to say that like, you know, that's like the best method. Of course, like we'd rather be in person and our client base also would rather be in person. I am like, you know, receiving these calls, um, like they're just asking, oh, when can I come into the office? Mm -hmm. And, you know, for some of our community members, like like coming to the office was like a social thing for them. We have one uncle who used to come into our (laughs) office um, literally every week. Like he like was like our best friend, (laughs) you know? (laughs) Yeah, and he still like will call like once a week and be like, Mm -hmm. how are you guys doing? Mm -hmm. Like, like I wish that I could see you guys. And like, you know, um, when is the office going to open? Like things Mm -hmm. like that, because like for them, that's also a place. So a community. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Um, so, yeah, but they're also like alongside with that, there's still a digital divide. Uh, we like we are like working or our, our reach is to low income um, mm-hmm. and limited English proficient households. And so like there's a d- digital divide. There's a gap in the technology like technology accessibility and things like that. And so um, really trying to make sure that like also keeping that in mind, um, Mm -hmm. it has made it difficult to communicate because, um, you know, one, it's like, like people prefer in person to, because they're also offering like very private information. There's like a whole safety and trust aspect of it too. Um, And yeah, but we have seen an increase in calls around mental health. Um, old clients are now revisiting, and then there's new clients that are coming in or being uh, referred to us. Um, and then many, like most calls, are like around like unemployment and public benefits right now. Um, and you know, like we're like for our gender-based violence work, um, like it's, like reaching survivors, like it's like already sensitive. We also like already, even pre-COVID, we like had to be very careful about con- like the ways that we contact them, um, you know, for whatever like their case might be. Um, so now it's just even more sensitive because what if they're sheltered in place with, with an abuser, whatever right. maybe. So really trying to keep those things in mind um, when we're providing our services and knowing that like our services are being impacted (laughs) because Mm -hmm. of the virus um, but that we're still trying to reach um, as many people as possible and we like have been reaching a lot of people so yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, So in what ways is South Asian Network continuing to serve the needs of South Asians in SoCal um, especially those being impacted by the COVID directly? Yeah so that was like uh, like our initial response was let's call all of our clients and check in on them. We have a database database of over 1200 clients um, and we called them, uh, we're called, like we have been calling them and we're continuing to get into in touch with them. Um, just letting them know that we're still here. That's like the first thing. Cause for mm-hmm. people who like, you know, are just like, Oh, like the initial response of course was like, everyone's just staying home. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, now I feel like people are still like going out and about and things are like changing a little bit, but like in the initial like two weeks, um, our, we were really concerned that like that our clients and our community members would just feel really alone and wouldn't know where to turn. Um, so we went, we went ahead and um, started calling all of our clients, letting them know that we're still here. Um, and that our services are still available remotely. Uh, we also, um, got, got quite a bit of funding to provide direct cash assistance for those Mm -hmm. uh, directly affected by the coronavirus. Um, so we're like helping people pay for their rent and their utilities, um, or providing them with the grocery uh, funding and things like that. Um, and then especially, uh, we got some funding to, uh, like specifically for the undocumented community, for those who aren't eligible for federal aid. Um, so we're able to provide them cash assistance as well. Uh, we did a lot of grocery runs for families who, um, either were not able to like go out and do the groceries due to, um, their like health conditions or like if they're elderly and things like that. Um, and then also just like, you know, spreading awareness about staying home, wearing masks and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, one initiative that we are currently working on is called Project Glove. It's in Orange County. Um, and we're collaborating with um, other Asian American um, and Pacific Islander organizations to get like food and other goods to elderly and vulnerable populations. Um, we're taking donations and also 
um, doing like a social distanced uh, food drive and things like that as well. Yeah. That's so great. Um, so have you noticed any trends in the community on how people are reacting to the current situation? Yeah, I mean, I think that for, for the community that we reached, um, you know, even just on Pioneer Boulevard where our office is, there's a lot of people who are working under the table, people who are not documented, all of these, situ all of these various situations, and all of these people are now out of work. Um, so that's like been the, the biggest sort of um, impact that we've, mm -hmm. we've seen and the biggest reaction is people are just um, financially impacted by the crisis. Um, people need help applying for unemployment. It's already complex and difficult as it is in English. And like if, if we add another layer of, um, you know, a limited English like household, like it, it makes it even more complicated. Um, so just really trying to also um, like we're also seeing a lot of people calling um, for unemployment and things mm -hmm. like that. Um, and then also like, I, so I receive all of the calls that are come to our office line every day. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm like picking up the phone several times a day and see, like hearing um, the stories of these community members. And a lot of the, a lot of the times I'm hearing about like the mental health aspect, like a lot of people mm -hmm. are expressing um, like, the like various financial difficulties but then also the stress and anxiety that's associated with that yeah um, the fear of losing their homes the fear of like how are they supposed to feed their families and like how are like they're not able to work um, and support their families because they just can't mm -hmm. and so and that's like a major trend that I've also noticed just also in our community um like the anxiety like surrounding the situation for my own parents also I think that's very interesting to see um because it's never happened before, so just being exposed to that now is just a very, like, oh, like, what's going on, you know, kind of thing, <laughs> but, um, so have you partnered with any other organizations to bring awareness, um, you know, regarding the communities? I know you mentioned that you all worked with the Asian American and Pacific Islander communities, um, so are there any specific organizations that you all have collaborated with recently? Yeah, yeah. So actually, um, this in May is Asian Pacific um, American Heritage Month. Um, so we actually collaborated with OCAPICA, which is an or the Orange County Asian Pacific Islander Community Alliance, mm -hmm. along with the UCI Humanity Center, um, to do a weekly panel series um, on Facebook Live um, for like just to spread awareness about like Asian Americans um, in 2020. That's the, the title of it, AAPIs in 2020. Mm -hmm. um, and each week we have a different topic. Um, the first week was around hate crimes against the Asian American community. Um, the second week was around social services and like accessing um, social services. Our executive director, Shikha Bhatnagar, was also a panelist on that. Um, panel uh, and she talked about you know Sam's work and just like the ways that our community has been um, receiving services and what what like the needs are for the community. Um, last week we had a, a specifically an uh, NHPI or Native Hawaiian Pacific Islander panel um, talking about the ways that the coronavirus has directly affected mm -hmm. um, them and then tonight we have our last panel which is on mobilizing the community and like how how we can in the age of the coronavirus in 2020 how can we uh, mobilize our community and what are some ways that we can you know um, mm -hmm. sort of give back or get more like you know be there for the community when they need us the most um, we also work with um, you know uh, South Asian organizations other religious organizations and cultural organizations to spread awareness about the resources that are available to the community um, we have done uh, food drives with um, the Gujarati Society of Southern California along with the United Six uh, to just give them resources um, from our end on like how like sand can support them um and yeah awesome and so, um, oh, oh sorry <laughs> yeah go ahead <laughs> um and also like you know we're just collaborating with organizations across southern california to spread awareness about the census um and how that participating in the census directly impacts the resources for the community and how relevant that is in today's day and age um because you know with about like let, let's just give the example of ventilators the amount of ventilators that are um like, you know, allocated per community is based on census data. And so, yeah. Um, so you mentioned all of these, like, really important um, resources. Um, so what piece of advice would you give to young South Asians who are interested in getting involved with community service? Yeah, I mean, I think that, like, 
it's like I know for me I'm like you know in my mid-20s now and like my initial response when like all of this started was like what can I do like and it's like how can you give back when you're stuck in the house like what can mm-hmm. we do um, but I think it's just about like you know reaching out and getting involved in the community and in your local community but also beyond that if you can um, and also just remembering like there's no contribution that's too small mm-hmm. um, any support like is like great and it's helpful and so I think that that's like one piece of advice that I definitely would want to relate to youth is that no support is too small nothing is too small like like you can give what you can and you know like for organizations like our own like we're a small staff um and our volunteers are really like so important and integral in our work um and you know just a, like another little piece of history for San, uh, about san is that uh, for the first 15 years it was purely volunteer based and so and that like has now built into this like multi-direct service organization um so yeah i mean it's just like no contribution is too small get involved where you can um currently we are trying to build our youth initiative um so if there are any youth that want to get involved with developing that it would be awesome like the youth like are our future they're the change makers of tomorrow um and they have a lot of great insight um so yeah just get involved where you can reach out um you know send me an email or a text message and i can definitely um you know like provide you some Mm -hmm. work to do (laughs) so (laughs) and just going off of that um last question what projects are you currently working on and are there any ways for people to get involved with the south asian network yeah um there's a lot of ways (laughs) for people (laughs) to get involved with the south asian network um so yeah all like i had mentioned all of our our programs and all of our services um those are all still like like you know, underway, we're still definitely providing all of these services um, over the phone, um, online, and all of that. Um, Some of like the bigger projects that we have alongside with that is like around the census, um, around, um, you know, client check-ins and things like that. Our outreach is like so important. Um, What like what's really amazing about SAN is that our office is in Artesia, like a small little office in Artesia, but we are serving communities across Southern California. Um, And the way that we're able to reach all of these places is through volunteers, is through the power of word of mouth. Um, People in Ventura County are able to reach us, people in Riverside are able to reach us. So they're two opposite ends of the spectrum. (laughs) Um, And they're both able to reach us because, you know, a friend of a friend told you or this and that. And so uh, word of mouth has like, and I've seen that just in um, like, like the past month and a half of our, when we've put out um, our hardship grant is that people were just calling left and right. Oh, my friend told me that you guys are helping with groceries oh my friend told me that you are helping uh with rent and things like that so that's like the most powerful tool um if you know and like I, that kind of ties back to the whole like no contribution is too small even just telling your friends and family in your local community about san um is a great help um and yeah um prior to uh, the coronavirus we also set up like local clinics um in like local libraries and community centers for citizenship and health insurance applications um and like having a local volunteer is like always helpful for that as well um but like remote opportunities are available doing text banking around the census um calling clients checking in with them um you know even if you're a graphic designer and you want to create some cool like you know outreach materials for us like all of that like you know is like super helpful Um, And then again, like, you know, just if you have the financial capacity, um, donating, like donating funds to our efforts and things like that in our organization is also great. Um, They're like, you know, again, no contribution is too small, but also like you can donate your time if if you can't donate, um, you know, funding Mm -hmm. and things like that. Like everyone's situation is different. We totally get it. Um, And yeah, those are just some ways um, to sort of get involved with SAN. Awesome. Um, so that was our last question. First of all, thank you so much for sharing all of that um, San has done so far. Um, it's really great seeing, you know, like the community being involved and just like South Asians in general being proactive about the situations. Um, so thank you so much for sharing that. Um, um, and also, I just want to thank you for like actually participating in this interview today. Um, uh, please do reach out to South Asian Network if you all are interested in getting involved. Um, 
but yeah, did you have any last comments, questions, anything that you want to yeah. add? Um, I, I would just say like, you know, thank you for even taking the time to listen to this. Um, if you are interested in getting involved, please reach out to me. My email is Zainab at sansocal.org. Um, and, uh, you know, I'll ask Zaina to, um, in include that in the description or whatever. Um, and yeah, like it'd be, I'd be like so happy, um, for those like who are interested in learning more about the organization or learning more about ways to get involved. 